Hello there, welcome back to another show. Uh, this week, as with the next two weeks, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to Halloween period. We're going to um, horror movies. Various types of horror movies. It's not just going to be one type of horror movie. It's going to be a whole bunch of types of horror movies. So, if you don't like one, there might be some others. So, it's a whole variety from Asia, from, you know, the West, from the cult, dungeons. There's all sorts of horror movies coming out. Um... I have a one like, non-horror movie, <laughs> I think, and covered. <laughs> I'm covering that with another horror movie. Uh, so, there we go. Um, so, I'm going to start off with the most tenuous to horror, which is Blind Beast. Now, Blind Beast is a kind of a kidnap horror movie. Definitely feels a horror flick, even though the plot sounds much more normal. But it goes into some very strange places. So, I'm going to have to butcher some names here. So uh, get ready for this one. So Blind Beast is directed by Yasuzo Mazamura, which I did not bad with, I think. Based on a story by Rampo Idogawa, which he's a famous Japanese author, does a lot of crime stuff. He was big influence a lot of Japanese directors, so he's a major writer to adapt. So this is one of his stories that was adapted in this film. It stars Iju... Funakash Oshi and Marco Midori. Um, now, uh, that's me done the <laughs> the names. <laughs> right, uh, now, the leading man actually was in a Gamera film the same year as this. He's in a silly Gamera film at the same t uh, within the same year as doing this film, which is quite astonishing. It's the most extreme, two extreme versions of Japanese cinema in one year with one actor. I don't see how this is possible for most actors to go this extreme from one to the other. This is quite insane. Um, so Blind Beast itself is quite a staggering movie. I'll go I'll go non-spoiler and I'll tell you when I'm going to spoilers. It'll be easier that way. Okay, um, so Blind Beast, the, the general story is this. Blind artist kidnaps this uh, woman who's a model for famous artists and he wants to use her as a model for his great artwork. That's what he wants to do. That's his aim in life. And it's the story's that simple. That's the whole setup. He kidnaps up this kidnaps this woman in the first ten minutes with help this other old woman helping him, takes her to this big factory he's got where he does all his artworks and now she's locked in a room with, with his artworks she can't escape and he's going to convince her to be his uh, muse to do his art to do the thing he wants to do because he says because he can't see he had to find his own way of doing art because life was uh, such a horrible experience it's his only way his only escape so he's fairly brutal about what he wants and what he needs and the, that's a setup. That's a real setup. That's the pure. It's a pure exploitation setup, really. It's like you've seen this about million bad movies. Like a guy kidnaps this male guy kidnaps this woman, and she has to be the his fantasies, and it's all about his bizarre fantasies and stuff. That's in what normally been a bad exploitation movie. You, you see tons of them streaming in the him. Um, Amazon or whatever. You just look out any horror, any in horror. There's always going to be a bunch of these ones. They're always going to be look. are always going to see my watchable, and it's like oh, I've been wasting my time in this garbage. What am I doing here? It's that kind of setup, but it's done by someone who knows what they're doing, and a writer who knows what he's doing. So it's this is almost like the great version of that setup. It's almost like. You shouldn't do another one after this film because this film did it perfectly. You don't need to do another one because this is the great version of this story. And so basically, the artist like starts the sculpture, and within his art, and this is the images you see, you're going to see the cover of this video. You're going to see cover anything you see Blind Beast. You're going to see these backgrounds of all these sculpted body parts. That's his art exhibit. That's what he's done with his art exhibits. That's how he does it. Is like every person he's touched, 
he's made the exhibit, made, made these art exhibits which hang the walls and they are this weird, creepy horror thing that feels very much expressionistic and weird and twisted. And it's it's quite an achievement because you're in this room for a long time and that stuff never gets old. And it's shot so well and it is part of the subtext of what he is and how he sees the world and how the story will develop. So it's it's not just cheap production design. It feels like it's a amazing production to start with, but it becomes something more as the story goes on. And it's like it's it's just a beautiful, stunning film about the it's an extreme versus relationship between an artist and his muse and how there's exploitation on both sides. The exploitation of the artist on the woman's body and of how he sees and how he exploits and how the the woman the muse wants this so that she's immortalised. And that's kind of what's there at the start of the film. It's all about this kind of... The relationship between the artist and his muse is more complicated than we sometimes let on. I mean, nowadays you get all that stuff about oh, it's all exploitation of the women. It's all... The, the, the guy did it. It's all horrible. He probably did horrible things to these women and stuff. And Well, it's much more complicated than that sometimes. I mean, some, a lot of times women just pay to do it and they did it and went on their lives. And a lot of times it was more artistic, like, joining the minds. Depends on who it was and what, the, what they were about. But it's a more complicated relationship between artists and muse. And this point is really into the, the, the darker details of it all. But I'm not going to get into the spoilers. But that's the kind of thing that's how it starts off. But then it develops in very interesting ways and... It's only an hour and 20 minutes, so it doesn't have to stretch anything out. As soon as you're thinking maybe this thing's going on a bit long here, it moves on to the next, its next thing. It never, even though it's stuck in a room for most of the time, it's always lots of ideas. It's always moving from one to the other to the other to the other. So it never stops to make you bored with any one setup. It's always gets some more story to tell, which makes it feel always vital and always, like moving forward. I mean, the best way I can describe it is, it's sort of like Cronenberg's Crash, where it's like they're into areas you do not expect and they're into areas with a lot of confidence and you might feel a bit disturbed by it, but you've but it is artistic stuff that maybe you're if it disturbs you, it's because you're probably immature. <laughs> you know, th this is a film made by adults for adults. It's about the kind of darker recesses of the human soul. You should not show this to anybody who's like under 18. This is a film for grown-ups. It's not for children. Not for, not for a child's mind. Like, at all. From the imagery to the themes, it's it's a grown-ups film. So, obviously I'm going to spoilers now, but definitely go see the film. If you're a grown-up and you want to see proper art, this is it. Now we're going to the spoilers. Right, um... As I said before, it's about the idea of the artist and the um, muse. So it takes the idea of this woman who is the muse to start with, and she's paid by this famous artist to do all these extreme nude photos that are pretty dark, and she's doing it because she thinks he's an artist, and she thinks by doing this for him, she'll elevate herself. So it doesn't have this thing that she's a pure soul. She's never a pure soul. But she is into this, but she's into it for her own reasons. But her own reasons might, she might be lying to herself for her own reasons by saying, I'm just in it for the fame to get what I get out of it. But it's obviously a draw to it. She's obviously interested in working with a real artist who do interesting stuff. So there's a mix of like defensiveness saying, oh, she's in it for the art, but she's also in it for the money, mixed with like denial about certain things that might be going on, on on in her mind that she doesn't want really to face up to. And it's it's almost like um this artist who kidnaps her sniffs this out. <laughs> so again, this could be a really bad exploitation movie. This kind of setup can be a perfect excuse for brazen misogyny on the part of the director. If he chooses to go that way and saying, Oh she really wants it and all the rest of it. No, it's a really complicated Emotional reasons a human being will have to do certain things. 
man or woman, you're going to have complicated reasons why you do things. It's not just something simple. So when she gets kidnapped by this guy who is viewed as emotionally disturbed and emotionally underdeveloped, they come out and see that straight away. She taunts him constantly for most of the film about how, how emotionally underdeveloped he is and how insecure he actually is for what he's doing. She she really lets him have it because, I mean, he's blind, but he treats his blindness as like an excuse to hate the world and it's an excuse for him to fall into his bad habits. And he exploits it so much. So he is a spoiled child. And she really lets him have it. But he also is onto something. He is into something, the sensuality of touch. And how that creates art. And he's creating this art in his, his big factory. It's overseen by his mother. His mother he's, he's got a lot of money from his dead father. His mother um, spoils him and, and indulges everything he wants. So he's got all these artistry of these different parts of a woman's body and there's even this massive one that's almost it was through most of the room and it's almost foamish and people can lie on the things it's completely obsessive about a woman's body in a way that's obviously saying of a disturbed body but as an art piece and as a visual idea for this obsessiveness it's wonderful in the film because it's this whole room so you get a sexual room with an eye Section of room with ears, section of room with legs, hands, arms, breasts, everything. It's almost like he's, he's um, sectioned parts of the body off. And it's almost like uh, some of them are sexual, some of them are just body parts, but it's like how is he seeing them and what is he into. So it's telling you about his mentality, but it's also showing you he's been spoiled rotten. But it's like they. The thing about artists is a lot of them are spoiled rotten. A lot of them do obsess over stuff that, in a way that most people think, "What is going on here?" And eventually, they start to find what they're what they're really interested in, and the art's a byproduct of that. So it's, it's just showing you like the the darker side of artists. We always like to see that side of artists as other that are trying to push forward and find something new. A lot of time, it's the one psychosis that's funneling this stuff through. And it's things that most normal people would say. Okay, that's a bit obsessive. I'll back away. The artist just keeps going. And it's about that. The film's about that. This thing of an artist who can't stop himself. He's just obsessive. He's crazy. And he is the blind beast. But through meeting this woman who's obsessed by she's her own masochistic tendencies. They start out fighting and then she he's gonna try to trick him to leave. But as the film goes on, and she tries to manipulate him against his mother by saying he's a virgin and he's a, his art's immature and he's never been a, a real woman and he doesn't understand touches and things. By her doing that, manipulating him to leave, she gets him to think deep of what he's doing. And But as he thinks deep of what, she, what he's doing, and she continues to manipulate him, she starts to think deep of what she's doing. So it becomes a thing where they become mutually obsessed by each other. And even when the mother dies through an accident and uh, she, she's knocked against her wall and her hair gets hit and she dies, they start to become obsessed with each other. And it starts to become less about the art and more about them touching over each other's bodies and becoming masochistic and hurting each other. And that's, all, that, that's the only way they can feel something. So it becomes about the darker side of humanity, the darker side of dislocation of bodies and dislocation of what you want from your bodies and that idea of um, life without sight but what, what's touch and how that can go to the most bizarre extreme and this is a wonderful film so dark, so disturbing but the director always keeps it relatable to the sense of you might not have this in your psyche but you understand enough to know that people do you know People have this in their psyche, even though you you might have self-control enough to say, you know, that's not a good idea. <laughs> These people don't have that. They are completely all in. It's a way you'd look at a drug addict or anybody with a problem. They're just so far into their addiction. And this one takes it to the bitter end. This it takes it to death. The way that some addicts or some people in their addictions can take someone to death that they can't stop. 
they get something from this no matter how much pain it causes them. It's all about that feeling. But they take it towards the kind of artist side of things and um, people who are masochists. But it's still the same thing, it's still the same human condition of people who cannot control themselves. And it's just a masterpiece. It's also a wonderful film. It's hard to find, but now it's become available in the UK and you should try and see it because it is just a stunning film. It's it's just one of those perfect films. It's like everything's done perfectly. The cast are right people. This is just a wonderful film. It's shot in a very moody way. Everything feels this high this contrast always feel beautiful and dark and it brings out all the kind of dark recesses of all the um atmosphere of the location. It's very, very clear about what it is and just how sick it is and how dark the feelings are. It just is one of those perfect films. So I'd highly recommend it and um, you should just go see it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm, I'm trying not to stretch it out for too long. Just go see the film. So we're back with another video, but that's me for now. Just remember one film for this time because I don't think you can really follow Blind Beast when talking about another film. It's just so good. It just needs its own video. Okay, uh, that's me for now. I'll be back later. Right, bye. <laughs>